Boston Celtics go up two to one last night, beating the Golden State Warriors at Boston. Steph Curry gets injured at the end of the game. It does look like D Money, he is going to be suited up for game four this Friday. So maybe this is not a big deal, but what's your reaction from last night's game? Uh, this is a, the Boston team that I expected to see in Boston. Um, a lot of the, some of the role players showing up and Robert Williams being who we thought he was going to be, you know, between him and Al Horford. I'm like, I don't know what these guys forget that they were tall or, or, or what happened in that game too. But it looked like they came out in a different tone and, um, and they're continuing to do good despite what Jason Tatum is. I don't, I don't know what Jason Tatum be doing right now. I don't, he, he's like in the middle, like he still produced a decent game, but, for people to say that he's a superstar, mm, I'm not seeing superstar just yet. So I think folks need to slow down. But defensively, about, I, they did. What I, go ahead. Go ahead. He talked about that stigma and that topic of discussion been going on for the last two years about is he a superstar or not. He said he doesn't know where it came from because he didn't actually come out of his mouth and say it himself, but... I feel like he's there, but what we have to consider is the hardware because all the other superstars just about got some type of hardware from an MVP trophy to a Larry O'Brien trophy. So he still got work to do, but the skill set is there. I mean, no, I mean, he has superstar talent, never denied that, but I would say I would go even further than that producing the playoffs. Because there's a lot of guys. There's some guys that we have that are superstars that don't have rings, bro. True. So it's just, you know, one of them things. Um, I do like to say I like what I saw from the Celtics. Uh, I like what I saw from Draymond Green being a bum like we thought he was. (laughs) Apologies for that, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's ironic that you brought up Draymond Green because I'm going to keep it a buck here on the best of seven. Draymond Green being the heart and soul of the Golden State Warriors is laughable to me. I've been hearing the experts say this for about two to three years. Yeah. And I, and I bite my tongue because I kind of understand what they're trying to say. Mm-hmm. But he, nah, it's it's laughable to me, bro. I know he's the aggressor. I know mm-hmm. he's probably the one in the locker room with the biggest persona. You know what I'm saying? I understand that, but that's not the heart of Golden State. The heart of Golden State is winning, looking good while doing it. Steph don't mm-hmm. be in no trouble. Clay don't be in no trouble. Steve Kerr don't be in a bunch of scandals and drama. Like they're supporting and that role players don't get in a lot of BS. So mm-hmm. I never understood how they try to quarterback Draymond as being the culture of Golden State when his behavior seems to be co- totally opposite to how they give it up on the day to day. It's just like he's just a part of the ride. And I, I, I respect that they, he's needed. But they, a lot of professionals feel like he's the heart of Golden State, and that it bugs me out. Laughable. I got to talk to the bosses. I'll say, I say, I say this. Um, I feel like earlier in Golden State's tenure, I probably would have said that because he was actually producing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. he wasn't just coming out here just laying eggs like like the way he's been laying eggs. You know what I'm saying? Doing all this extra stuff. Normally, when you start doing extra things on the, that means that either your skills diminishing or your athleticism is is going. You know what I'm saying? You start to do little dirty things, little little tactics, you know, and try to be on the mental side because you can't do what you can do on a physical. Right. So, uh, it's it's more so on that. But it's like when people try to put him up here in this status of like a Charles Barkley or one of the top five greatest power forwards you ever seen. I'm like, come on, bro. Y'all gotta, 
Wait a minute. Y'all gotta wait, relax. wait, 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 wait a minute. I think you gotta relax. You now you you have no respect for the for 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 uh Draymond Green. I'm not gonna take it that far. The boy can uh, play ball. The boy can definitely play ball. But again, I didn't say I did not say that he could play ball. I just said he ain't up in the top five power forwards ever. Are we doing that? I'm not, but the way you delivered that message, it just seemed like oh, he'll never Lord. be great. He's a Hall of Famer in the making. Can we agree on that? Draymond I mean, the NBA, is not a Hall of Famer? The NBA, the NBA lets anybody in the Hall of Fame nowadays. You <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> I just don't get it, man. You know, I've never looked at Golden State as being a physical basketball club. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And... I'm not saying what I know he's a tone setter. I know what mm-hmm. Draymond Green brings to that organization. I get that part. But mm-hmm. just their face, what they, you know, they what he has been doing and the lack of production just seems totally opposite from Golden State. And I don't know. To me, he's a liability more than the asset. Yes. If they don't, if they don't win a championship this year, I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to move on. Either this year, either this year or next year, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to move on from him. Because, I mean, you got a young guy in Wiseman who still needs to develop. True. You know what I mean? And then you have, uh, was it Kuminga? I think Kuminga could play the three and the four, can he? Um, they got some size. Yeah, they got they got guys, and you got Looney. Um, who they can move to the four that does more for the team than Draymond does. Other than, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I guess they like the fact that he could play point forward, but I'm like, bro, like you have a point guard already, you know? And it, it's, it's one of the things I, I, I feel like we overrate certain things that he does. So uh at this point, yeah, I could see him being a liability. Uh, how much do you put an injury? Like, the dude had pretty much almost like the, the Paul George injury almost, oh from what I can God. remember. Listen to me. So, Re- I mean, how long Re- – How let me, let, me get my, let me get my round off. How long should a grace period be for a guy that's had that type of injury, especially – when his main thing is shooting. And you know, when it comes to shooting, his jump shot, the way that he shoots, you know it's all in the legs. So, that being said, I didn't expect to see an 100% Clay Thompson this year. I still don't think that he's up to the level that he was playing before the injury. But how long is the grace period for you? Because... I mean, obviously, he's done enough to, you know what I'm saying, they're in the finals. All of that ain't stuff. Now, Clay Clay Thompson (laughs) is the reason Golden State is in the finals. This is ridiculous. This is some of the most asinine. Come on, cut it out. It's a lot of people that's a part. It's 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 16 people on the team. Cut it out. Are you kidding me? Number one, let me ask you this. I'll break this thing down in the simplest form. Okay. Is Clay Thompson a star or a superstar okay. to you? He is a borderline star. So he's not a superstar. Okay. I'm not going to say. Is, no. Is, is Clay Thompson a shell of himself? It, uh, what we're seeing now from Clay Thompson, is it the same Clay Thompson that everybody used to praise? No. Okay. Uh, the, Number the, three. The same. The, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Number three. This man mm-hmm. has had two years off and a whole season to play this year. Don't come at me about no injuries, bro. Who else do you know? <laughs> the Mary. Who else do you? Wait a minute. Did- Who else do you know since you've been watching the NBA? What other star do you know have been? took two years off basically and come back and get their same spot outside of Michael Jordan. 
Don't talk to me about that injury. He has been, he had, he's been sitting on his couch for two years. They played pretty much the whole season this year. He didn't really get hurt this year. You are now listening to the hottest NBA podcast, Best of Seven. If you would like to start your own podcast, join the Anchor family by Spotify. You can distribute your podcast on various listening platforms. Also get paid, make money from each episode. Best of all, it's free. Download the Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Now back to the show NBA fans. In the playoffs, he's healthy. I don't want to hear no excuses about no no uh, injuries. He's the just not that guy. Him, the only reason it took him two years is because of the setbacks. Come on, bro. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't take half of the what was going on through those two years. You asked me. two years is because of the setbacks that he was dealing with. You asked me he's how long would I allow a player. Defensive player. You asked me how long I would he's allow not, a player. I would allow a player, ahead, depending ahead. on the injury, a year, maybe a year and a half. You come back oh. at the, like, maybe a year and a half. Kawhi, I give a year. KD, when he got hurt, give a year. This man got two years and played this whole season. Injury shouldn't be, I don't want to hear nothing about no injuries. It's game time now. It's go time now. You are in the <laughs> NBA finals. You here. And you got Steph with you, and you got Draymond and some other guys. This you you got everything you need. And yeah, we get moments of Clay Thompson. They say game six, Clay. We're gonna need game four, Clay. We're gonna need that this next game because if they go three down three one to Boston, it's over. Yeah, but how long did y'all get Paul George before we start seeing the Paul George? No in, one has put Indiana. Paul George on the pedestal that they put in this guy on. And Paul George led a team. Paul George led the Pacers to the Eastern Conference Finals. He took the team, he took his own team to the press a couple times. Paul George has proven, and he was young doing that. Clay ain't never did nothing without Steph Curry. Nothing. I don't even, be- I don't even believe people would have even known him if it wasn't for his dad. I don't remember him oh, in college. Boy, no. I don't remember. Yeah. You remember Clay Thompson in college? Oof. I don't. No. Come on. All right, then. Like, but I mean, there's on. players that are, oh, man, you just being. <laughs> That's overrated to me, bro. That's overrated to me because people will sit up there on face value. We, Clay Thompson is one of the greatest players, or one of the best two guards in the league. Oh, really? Nah, see, I never said that. I just said for yeah. what his skill set is, he's he's a shooter basically. He's he's the same skill set maybe of a Reggie Miller. He's probably Reggie no. Miller all over again. No, 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 no. I'll no. say a better defender when he was before the injury. I like the comparison not, of Paul George. I like the comparison the of Paul stuff. George because they 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 two way players. They're two way players offensively mm-hmm. and defensively. Clay used to give it up, but. Clay's not that defensive presence no more. And offensively, he struggles. And I don't want to hear no excuse about, oh, he was hurt. He was out for two years, and he played this year. That guy's overrated to me, bro. We'll we'll agree to disagree. All right. (laughs) Well, that's all I I had on the menu, I will say in the sense of, I'll say this. What's that? (laughs) What was that? In the You'll sense say- of, okay, for people that do try to put him, put, put Clay at a superstar level, I don't agree with that. But I think that his rating should be right at a star level. And I think, uh, you don't even think he's at least a star level, is what you're trying to tell me. No, he's a star because he can definitely get hotter than anyone in the league. He don't put up big numbers. He can play ball. He, he can play ball. Okay, you know, but but he ain't, that's why he, I ain't, he, he can't so lead no team him? nowhere. He can't lead no team nowhere. Okay, cool. But for so. you to say, <laughs> we'll 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 get to it. It's cool. That's your man. <laughs> that's your man. He's overrated, and he's not even doing. He's not even doing what y'all fell in love with. What y'all fell in love with. That's he's not cool. even producing no more. So good luck with him. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I do have one more thing. Uh, sure. Devin Ham and Russell Westbrook. Um, about him sacrificing, I wanted to know what you were, you know, excited about that whole whole deal because we had said about them keeping Russell Westbrook. So, <laughs> you know, what's your whole deal on that? It's interesting, the money that they also picked up Rasheed Wallace to be an assistant. Um, they mm-hmm. just let go of David Fisdale. Mm-hmm. I like the attitude. I like I like everything I hear. You know, Russell mm-hmm. saying that he's willing to sacrifice and Darwin Ham saying that he's willing to hold everyone accountable. Those are the right things to say. Mm-hmm. Only problem is I swore I heard those things last year. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I understand Darwin Ham and Frank Vogel are two different voices. But the mission was the same last year. Chemistry. Everyone was going to have to sacrifice and mm-hmm. adjust. Russ knew when he first came to L.A. that he mm-hmm. wasn't going to be able to play like he played before. So now what you're going to have to do? How do yeah. you how do you adjust from what you did last year? Go back to how you played in OKC? That ain't going to, like, it's just not going to work with the personnel. It just does not work. It is what it is. It doesn't matter who's coaching you can't put Russell, LeBron, and AD on the same team for an 82-game stretch. I think they're going to have a, a winning season, and they're winning the postseason. I just don't see it, bro. I'm not no, mad I, at I can feel you. you. Uh, I was going to say the, the whole thing for me was Dre – no, sorry. Rasheed Wallace, I think if you decide to keep AD, which I know you're, like, super opposed to doing – Rasheed Wallace is just a guy to keep a fire under his butt. You know what I'm saying? To probably keep keep that that hunger or try to start keep that motor going. You know, going forward in the season. But you know, I would say that's true. I would say that's true. Start. I would say that's true. If Anthony Davis mm-hmm. never won the championship, if you want to keep it real, Anthony Davis' career mm-hmm. is better than Rasheed Wallace. So even though Rasheed Wallace won a chip with Detroit, Anthony Davis matches him. So what the hell can Rasheed Wallace tell Anthony Davis? If Anthony Davis haven't won a championship yet, then I can see, you know, Rasheed Wallace being that mentor and could, you know, keep that hunger, that drive. But to me, AD's just going Hollywood. All right, man. Peace to my NBA family. It's your host, Seven Mitchell, with the best of seven sports talk. I just wanted to take this time out to say thank you to each and every one of you guys for so much support for the podcast. I hope you guys are really enjoying some of the outside the box angles we take bringing you in these NBA storylines. Please don't forget to like and share. Most importantly, rate the podcast. You can follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description. And if you would like to contribute to the Best of 7 Sports Talk platform, we have merchandise available as well as links for the merch and donations will be all in the description. Once again, thank each and every one of you guys in the NBA community for supporting the show. This is Seven Mitchell with the Best of 7 Sports Talk. Let's talk some NBA action.